So how does the international economy, how does it actually work? Why is dollar affecting everything in Nigeria? So why is dollar affecting everything in Nigeria? When Dangote finished building its uh, refinery, we were happy that that thing is going to crash the price of uh, crude oil. They we were shocked to hear about some two weeks ago that Dangote had to go to America to be buying crude oil that we have in Nigeria for his refinery in Lagos. We can't understand the magic. I mean, we have crude oil in Nigeria, Niger Delta, just bring it and put it in Lagos. But Dangote said he could not get crude oil from Lagos, I mean, from Niger Delta. So the man had to go to America to spend dollar to buy crude oil that we have in Nigeria to refine in Lagos. It's unbelievable. How does the, price, the dollar price affect pepper that you buy here? How does it affect the suya? How does it affect the rice you are buying at Mami Market? How does it affect transport fare? After all, all those things are in Naira, not dollar. And that is what we are not trying to look at. We call it international political economy. The world is interconnected. The world is interconnected. That is the key. That is the answer. I said the world is interconnected. And what connects the world is what you call international trade. That is what we are looking at. So the world is interconnected, and what connects the world, what ties them together, is that thing called the international trade. And to surprise you, the shirt you are wearing, about some 10 countries may actually made that shirt. A different one will make the dye, a different one will make the cutting, a different one will make the rope, another one will make the button. It's another country's machine that will sew that thing together. So you have about, in, in, in fact, the phones you are using, about 15 different countries makes that phone. The component of that phone is like the rice you are, the food you are eating at Mami Market now. You get it from ten, at about 10 different states in Nigeria. Tomato from the east, uh, then pepper from Yoruba, then palm oil from the, the north and so on. Before you dump then the coal again from somewhere in the middle belt before they now cook that thing. That's interconnectedness. It's the same with international trade. Trade is what connects international, I mean, countries together within the international political system. Now, the question you ask is this, is this, which is where we are going. Must we trade? Is it compulsory for us to trade? If I can produce everything I need, then why would I want to trade? Do you know why you have friends in during exams? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why you normally say, come, come, your seat is here, your seat, I've kept, I've kept your seat, I've kept your seat. But it's, it's because of love. <laughs> now, if you know all the answers to the question, you wouldn't want to sit beside anybody. In fact, you prefer for them to give you your own special seat in the front. Outside, I'm coming. You know number one, that person knows number two. That means you are interconnected. So without the other half, that examination question cannot be complete. It is the same with trade. States cannot do it alone. States cannot produce everything they need. For them to survive, they have to trade, to go into relationship with other states. You cannot marry yourself and give birth to yourself. No. Men has come, men has come, you must marry one. <laughs> <laughs> where, they, where they has come, they has come. They've broken your heart 20 times. You don't, no matter the amount of breakfast you've eaten, you must marry one. Before they introduce international trade, now just listen. Don't worry, I told you I'll be fast. Before they introduce international trade, what they used to have is what you call otaki. Otaki. A-U-T-A-R-K-Y. Uh, otaki. Otaki simply means uh, self-sufficiency. A state is the barber. Is the farmer, is the engineer, is the teacher, is the pilot. Everything is done within the state. But they now realize that the state was not maximizing its potential by doing jack of all three, master of none. They realized that the state was, imagine if they give all your courses to one lecturer. Exactly. If they give all your courses to one lecturer, you only enjoy that thing for the first 20 minutes. Others you won't even understand what they're Even the man will even get tired. And that's why they give all your courses to different lecturers. 
Now, autarky is when a state is self-sufficient. They produce everything at the same time. But the problem is they won't be able to maximize that production. If a state is the one, listen, you know, that produces the food it eats, produces the clothes it wears, produces the medicine, and there will be a problem. By the time it's cooking, you will now realize that, no, it has to harvest. By the time it's harvesting again, you will realize that he has to bath. By the time it's bath, you realize again that he has to teach. And so everything will be incomplete. That is the problem with autarky. So what state now devises this? That look, since autarky is not good, why not allow one person to be baba, another one to be farmer, another one to be teacher, the other one to produce medicine? So that, so that, so that, if you are the teacher and I'm the baba, since I don't teach, you teach me, then I'll bab you. That way we maximize efficiency. So they discover that self-sufficiency wastes time. It does not maximize the potentials. So they now call, okay, they now change to what we call, okay, I remember, that thing you call specialization. They change to that thing that we call specialization. Remember, I'm a professor. But then, if my tiger gen has faults, I can't bring out span and start doing that thing. I might do it oh, probably in a month's time. If I start on that day, then take me to the But if I call the professional now, that boy, that illiterate boy will just come around and just say, pr 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 do the magic, then he asks for money. But the, you know, when he's busy doing it, I have times to do other things, like prepare for my lecture today, compared to if I'm sp spending a whole month trying to repay because I said I'm a professor. Then when I'm through with that thing again, to bab again, I'll now go to the mirror, then I'll be doing that thing. And I remember again, as I'm doing that thing, I'm reading because I have lecture at the same time. That is autarky. It won't allow you to maximize your potential. But then when you now have specialization, if I'm good at teaching, you that you're not good at teaching, but you're good at fixing gen, you fix my gen, then I pay you by teaching you. That is international trade. That is why that thing came. It's self-interest. Not that people like you. That's why they're trading with you. They trade with you because it's to their advantage to trade. That is why you have trade. That China is in Nigeria is not because they love Nigeria. That America is in Nigeria is not because they love Nigeria. No, but because it is to their benefit. That is why you trade with countries within the international political system. Can I continue? Now, before you start this trade, there's something you have to do internally. We call that thing production possibilities uh, uh, assessment. Production possibility assessment. That's the first thing you do in your state. What does that mean? You identify the resources you have. You identify the resources you have. It is when you know what you have that you can now say this is what you specialize in. Listen, though, you have about six courses now. You are not good in Yoruba history. She is good in Lagos history. You are good in European history. So what you tell him is, look, your a production possibility assessment is specialized on European history. I'll specialize on Lagos history. When you are through your European history, you teach me your Lagos history. I mean, I, I mean, I'll teach you by your Lagos history. You teach me your European history. Is it making any sense? As you specialize, what is it that you have? Nigeria, we have crude oil. Stay with petroleum. Nigeria, we have crude oil. Stay with pet pet petroleum. Leave technology. America, they don't have crude oil. They have technology. Stick to technology. So when you need technology, then you give us petroleum, then we'll give you technology. Is it making any sense? Yeah. Uh, so your resources matter. That is why, for example, you don't just pick any random person as a sitting partner. You ask, what are you bringing to the table? You answer question number one. I'll answer question number two. Then you answer question number three. Your potential is number one. Mine is two. And yours is three. So by the time I'm through with one, I'll give you two, then I'll give you one. Then when I am two with two, I'll give him three, then he gives me two, a two. Is it making any sense at all? That is why states trade. Production poten possibilities potential or assessment is still the same thing. Identify the resources that you have within the states. So what, once you know what you have, that is what you produce. You produce that thing more. The other countries will identify what they have. They produce that thing that they have. They, what that you didn't have, you exchange it with what you have. Let's continue. Now, there's what we call opportunity cost. Now, there's what we call opportunity cost. If you are good at doing two things, if you are good, just listen to the explanation. If you are good at doing two things, are you listening? But you now discover that when you do something out of the two, 
you do lesser of the other. That is the cost. What you lose by doing more of one thing. You know, that, that, that name itself is actually confusing. When they say opportunity cost, not gain, it's what you are, you are losing by doing something else. If you are an actor and you are a singer, and you are now concentrating more on the acting, when you concentrate more on the acting, you lose ability to sing. And that's why they say opportunity cost. You have more opportunity acting, but at the same time as you are acting, you are losing your singing ability. It is the same with state. Listen, no. it is the same with state. A state can be good in everything. But they have discovered that once they have concentrated on one thing, they will lose the ability to be able to do the other thing. Let me give you a good example. Today, we have a food crisis in Nigeria. In the 1960s, it was not, it was not so. Nigeria was the breadbasket of Africa, if I can boast that, if I can put it that way. Agriculture was the in thing. From the north now, we get the ground nut. Ground nut is, I mean, ground nut is where you get ground nut oil. And they use that thing as a lubricant. From the north. From the south now, cocoa now, if you heard of cocoa, cocoa is where you get that thing for, what's it called again? Chocolate and the rest of them. So every region in Nigeria, they have their thing. Agriculturally, we were okay. Oil now came in. Opportunity cost now set in. We started producing oil and we neglected agriculture. So the more we concept, we thought we can actually balance the two. And that's why they warned you to be careful about trying to balance everything together, juggle everything together at the same time. As they said, uh, what did that thing again? We're a master of none. How do you say that? Jack, exactly. Exactly. Something will suffer. So Nigeria now, you know, we had oil, then we have agriculture. Rather than for us to pick one out of the two, which would have been agriculture, basically, we neglected agriculture and we concentrated on crude oil. And we are not paying the price till today. <laughs> See, that is what we are facing in Nigeria now. That's a perfect example of opportunity cost. Nigeria is a country filled with potentials. Everything, everybody can do it at the same time. Everything. Everything, everybody can do everything at the same time. They you now discover that they are not getting anything done. Because they are trying to do everything at the same time, so they can't finish that job. And that's why when you want to build a house, don't listen to your bricklayer when he tells you he's also a painter. He's, <laughs> he's also an electrician. And he also does uh, tiles at the same time. You, ex you run into problem. You run into problem. Oh, God, okay, don't worry, I do everything. I, I'll do uh, finishing, furniture, anything about that thing, I complete it together. If you, if, if that, that is the problem. It's the same problem you have with a lecturer that teaches everything. Because you just discovered that I can only touch the introduction of all the courses without finishing any of all those set courses. So opportunity cost is that thing that you lose when you concentrate on one and you're not able to finish the other. That is why trade is important. Every country can do otaki. Every country can do otaki. But at the end of the day, they will lose they will fail spectacularly. Because the energy they would have devoted to doing something else, and they would have been wasting the energy on different kinds of... And you have the bricklayer, you have the painter, you, you won't have the time to finish. Because if you are the bricklayer and the painter, that means you can only do the other when you are through with the first one. Compared to if all the workers are working at the same time. Carpenter is working, window man is working, the, the plasterer is working, the German floor guy is working, the towel man is working, the plumber is working, compared to you are the only person doing all that things together. PA, then again, you have what they call comparative cost advantage. Comparative cost advantage. It simply means, again, these are reasons why countries treat, in, in case you've forgotten, that is what I'm emphasizing. Why they can't, even if the country is your enemy, you are forced to carry out international trade with them. Comparative cost advantage. It means, contrary to what you were thinking, <clears throat> it means that as a country, you might have all the resources, but you might have an absolute advantage in producing a particular product compared to the other. I will explain. <laughs> there are, you know, theory. That is why I don't like quoting theories most time. I prefer to explain it to you. It simply means, as a country, you can produce phone. 
I can produce pen. I can produce paper. So as a country, you can produce phone, you can produce pen, I can produce paper. But what they now discover is that you can produce phone cheaper compared to paper and pen. So remember, as a country, you can produce the three. But what they discover is you can produce phone cheaper compared to paper and pen. While another country can produce paper cheaper compared to pen and phone. Can I continue? You can, okay, two things. Don't let me use three. Phone and pen. You can produce them as a country. You have the resources. No problem. But you don't, you don't discover that you can produce phones better than you can produce pen. You can produce the two. But you can produce phone faster and better and cheaper than you can produce pen. While the other country can produce pen faster, better than they can produce phone. So that means your comparative cost advantage is production of phone, not pen. Pen will create problem for you. You can produce it, but at a higher price. Put it this way. I, I hope you are aware that they are producing cars in Nigeria. But you don't see people driving Nigerian cars now. You, uh, no, 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 no. You don't know. You, you, you know why they don't see you don't see people driving in their cars? Hey, you know, son. Then there's one another one that Chinese thing called GAC. Now, or Gili, I think one Chinese something. Now, you know, you know why they don't buy them? Because Nigerians say they are too expensive. That means we didn't have the comparative advantage in producing car. It is cheaper for the Chinese to produce cars. They have the advantage. They have the resources. They have the people. They have the material. Compared to that of Nigeria. So Nigeria should stick to what? It has more advantage in producing. That you can produce cars does not mean you should produce car. If you can produce car, and Benin can also produce car, and you are selling yours at two naira, and Benin is selling its own at one naira, it made economic sense for people to buy that of Benin than to buy that of Nigeria. So that means Benin have comparative cost advantage over that of uh, Nigeria. Now, this is how you get out of that situation. If it is cheaper to produce phone in Nigeria, and it's expensive in Benin Republic, but it's cheaper to produce uh, pen in Nigeria, and it's expensive in Benin Republic, what you simply tell yourself is, okay, fine, I'll produce the phone, then you produce the pen. Then you buy the pen cheaper from me, and I'll buy the phone cheaper from you. That is comparative cost advantage. Does it make any sense? Comparative cost advantage. Or better still, we are great, we are, when you are growing up as a child, I think this makes it better. When you are growing up as a child now, you must have tried all the sports. Running, football, basketball, uh, lawn tennis, that one we use uh, Paco. Uh, the, the ping pong. Can you remember? The ping pong. But later, now listen. The later, they must have discovered that you are good in running. That, that you, you are good in running compared to ping pong, compared to lawn tennis. So the running is your comparative cost advantage. You can do all the things together. But the one that you can maximize your strength is when you run. It is the same with states. All states can produce what they have, what, what they want. Uh, listen, no. all states can produce what they want. But every state has advantage. They have their advantage in producing specific things. All states can produce what they want. Presently, presently, European states and America and China are producing electric vehicles. All of them are producing electric vehicles. You know what they've not discovered? That it is cheaper to produce in China than in Europe and America. So China has the comparative cost advantage compared to Europe and America. And you know what Europeans and Americans are now trying to do? They are now trying to buy from China than buy from America and Europe. That is the beauty of comparative cost advantage. It makes it cheaper for the one producing because he has all the natural resources as it is. China, America, Europe, they are all producing the same electric vehicle. To produce in China, 50 naira. To produce in America, 200,000 naira. To produce in Europe, 300,000 naira. And they are all selling to the same market, selling in the same market. So when you see the three vehicles, and they are all electric, how much? China, 50. 
America 200. Three. You go for China. So technically, it will be better for America and Britain, Europe, to leave production of electric vehicles to China because China has the comparative cost advantage. Is it making any sense now? So other countries will look for what they can do and give to the world. What is it that we have comparative cost advantage in, in Nigeria? Now, listen. Now, your inability to be able to answer that question explains why we have dollar crisis presently in Nigeria. You have a problem when you are only buying and you are not selling. International trade works on that comparative thing. You must have something and I must, I must have something. But when you are buying from me, that means I'm taking away your money. You are not getting any money in return. That is what is killing Nigeria's economy. That's why they keep shouting that we are not producing anything. We are not, but we have all the things. But we are not producing anything. We are not producing anything. We are always buying what they are producing. All of them, what others are producing. But Nigeria, we are not producing anything. There must be something. You, you can't say you are my friend. That you, you can't be copying me 24-7. You must know one question at least. <laughs> on another level, you didn't know anything. By 300 level, I said, eh, eh, eh. I think I need a new friend. That is why Nigeria is facing the crisis that we are facing presently. Now, quickly, how does a can do, can use to protect itself from the disadvantages of international trade? You know, it has advantages and it has its advantages. So what are those things that a state can actually do to protect itself from the disadvantages of international trade? We call it protectionism. We call it protectionism. And they have two types. You have tariffs. Tariffs. Tariffs, one. Then two, non-tariff barriers. Tariffs. Then two, non-tariff barriers. Under the non-tariff barriers, one, you have quota system. Quota system. Quota system. Two, health and safety warnings. Write them down. Health and safety warnings. Three, finally, procurement. Procurement. Nigeria, we've used that a lot. Procurement. Tariffs. Okay, there's a fourth one too. Infant in industry protection. Infant industry protection. Infant industry protection. Tariffs. Tariffs are like taxes. Tariffs are like taxes. When you want to stop people from consuming things that are actually coming from outside the country, you increase the price of that thing. That's why you call it tariff. Listen. When you want to stop people from consuming funny made products, you put a higher price on them to dissuade, dissuade people from buying those things to eat them. Again, I'll repeat. If they produce Coca-Cola in Nigeria and they're also bringing Coca-Cola from outside Nigeria and people prefer the one of, from, I mean, coming from outside Nigeria compared to the one in Nigeria, what the government will do is they will increase the price of the one coming in from outside Nigeria. That of Nigeria will be 50 Naira. The one coming from outside Nigeria would have been increased to like 2,000 Naira. That will force people to go back to that of 50 Naira compared to that of 1,500